It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around uh, the world, we are Red Eye Radio. Welcome and good morning. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. And welcome, welcome all the garbage to the show. Yes. Or Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware. They're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is just supporters. Ah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow. Hello, garbage. Wow. How's how's the garbage doing Listen, today? Just remember, this is about joy and unity. <laughs> <laughs> this is a classic Biden move. We got a call from the boss. Gary, did you call the audience garbage? <laughs> Proudly. Uh, proudly and right. De- and right. De- just like deplorable, right? And deplorables. You're, you're you're a bunch of deplorable garbage. Oh man, there's got to be some garbage. Uh, huh? Remember, George Costanza found a nice treat in the garbage. There you go. Remember? It was sitting on top. It's- <laughs> it was sitting on top. <laughs> uh, well, but 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 here's the thing, it's the new MAGA. Make America garbage again. <laughs> Right on. I'll wear that T-shirt all day. <laughs> Let's trash all this garbage talk. Exactly. Oh, can, can we recycle it? Uh, the, Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try at least through next Tuesday. That's I mean, it's. But but you look at this, and and again, these are classic Biden moves. The day that he walked into the press room. To tell all of the world, no, 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 we're 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 lockstep with each other. Kamala Harris, in fact, uh, uh, was was a key part of all of my signature moves. I'm convinced on that day he got wind that she was in an interview or somewhere. She was going to make a point that they that she is going to do things differently, that she's going to try and separate herself from Biden. He wouldn't have that. He ran down the hall because it reeked of him running down the hall and running into that room. And that's what he did. And when you hear the garbage comment, what was she supposed to be doing? It was supposed to be a unity speech that she was supposed to be giving. And he's throwing all of this non-unity all this right garbage. out there and just all this, for everybody. All this garbage, garbage he's throwing out. Yeah. Uh, all right. Since we're talking about that point, because that's really the key point. You know, look, I mean, it's stupid name calling. Right. Uh, and uh, it's okay if I call everybody garbage because I'm garbage. Mm-hmm. So that's right. <laughs> as long as you're garbage, you can call other people garbage. Right. But Does that it, make us white trash? Which is, <laughs> exactly. I guess yes, it does. Yes, we're right. We yes, okay. we must have identity politics with our garbage. Yeah, I do own a small trailer. Technically, it's an RV. So uh, I'm I'm white Irish trash. There you go. All right, white Irish Catholic trash. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'm telling you, uh, it's oh, God. Not what I was expecting when I went to sleep before I came into work last night. I always take a nap before I come in, and when I went to sleep, I didn't know about this. Yeah. When I woke up, I'm yeah. The first thing I saw, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, post on X from one of our listeners. Now, there you go. Perfect example. Never underestimate the ability of Joe Biden to F things up. And and I'm, what happened? What happened? And then I saw another one. Wow. He just called, he just called half the country garbage. Or Biden just called half the country garbage. I mean, there was a little bit of anticipation and excitement. What the hell did he do now? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. To try to derail her campaign. Exactly. And and this is one of the questions that we first asked that Scott Jennings asked on CNN. Mm. Here's the panel. And this is just this is great. Mm. This this is just great. All right. Say, though, Bakari, he was he was in his house, the White House. He was in his house doing this. uh, And 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 the reporting is that 
there are places that he could be useful, but he's not <laughs> everywhere like you might expect a sitting president to be for his vice president. I, I don't know that I would expect this president to be everywhere in this moment. I mean, look, a critical element, any coach will tell you, any CEO will tell you, a critical element of running a team and winning is assessing the strengths and weaknesses of your team members and making sure you allocate them in the right way. Joe Biden has never been a big arena speaker. He's never been the most fluid speaker. And by the way, as someone who had a stutter growing up, it's very obvious to me that there's an apostrophe at the end of supporters there. He was referring to the garbage spewed by supporters, not simply the supporters themselves. But Joe Biden has been on the campaign trail. He's best getting ice cream in Maryland like he was today. He's best showing moments of empathy in Arizona like he was last week. He's best with union folks as he was in Pittsburgh last week as well. Um, you use people where they are best. You put Obama in a big arena, you put Michelle in a big arena, and you put Joe Biden in front of a bunch of union people doing retail I mean, politics. You could make the argument that they would be fine if Joe Biden wasn't anywhere near a well, microphone you, between you, now and next Tuesday. But, yeah, you, let, let me just accept the most charitable framing of this, which you just gave. Mm. Why is he sitting in front of a laptop at the exact same moment Kamala Harris is out on his backyard trying to give the closing argument to her campaign? What in the world is he doing? Now, I don't accept your framing of it personally because I actually do believe he, Harris, the Democratic Party, and most of their campaign do believe that half the country is garbage. They've also said people who go to Trump rallies are Nazis. And so it's pretty apparent the disdain with which they hold half of the country in. That's not true. Yeah. Oh, that's that's true. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, I burst out laughing at that one because all you've heard is that it was a Nazi rally. Mm -hmm. It's all mm -hmm. we heard from the media, Nazi yep. rally. Yep. They yep. asked her directly, do you believe Donald Trump's a fascist? Yes. She said, Yes. He's a Nazi. He's a fascist. It's a Nazi rally, Nazi rally, Nazi rally. They went bonkers on MSNBC. Yep. yep. You didn't hear, I didn't hear any Democrat come on and say, look, stop saying it's a Nazi rally uh, because he's only a Nazi. His followers are not. Of right. course, they're trying to communicate that everyone, that everyone who supports Donald Trump is a Nazi and a fascist. That's the entire point. Yep. And they get upset about the fact that Scott Jennings is saying, look, we believe that Biden and Harris believe that half the country is garbage. We believe of what Biden said, and they all go crazy. Well, what is you can you be a Nazi and not garbage? I mean, what's the what is what is going through their minds? They're struggling. They're struggling with this the uh the uh Harris campaign surrogates there. At CNN, they don't know where to go on this. Well, they don't, and and again, this is the random excuse making. Going, I well, it's clear there's an apostrophe there. Oh God, that's the word. You're you're making it up as you go along, right? You know, I mean, you're just you're trying to you're you're really wishing this had been something different. You're wishing this entire political season. Look for the Democrats. You guys chose Biden in the first place. And then you guys allowed this thing to happen with Kamala Harris. I mean, I know that exactly none of you technically voted for her to become the nominee. But still, it was always going to play out mm -hmm. this way. You had to have known that. By the way, nobody believes there was an apostrophe. This is CNN. No. Here we go. Uh, let's do this again here. Here. Governor, first off, just what's your response to that comment from from President Biden, where it sounds like he's calling Trump supporters there garbage? Yeah, look, I, I had not heard that until now, Caitlin. So I'm kind of giving you my fresh reaction to it. I, I would never um, insult the good people of Pennsylvania or, or, or any Americans, even if they chose to support a candidate uh, that I didn't support. Uh, by the way, he's not telling the truth. He knew it. Yeah. If you were up at that time, that was instantaneous. That wasn't the actual audio cut that I wanted to play. Mm. There was the one previous to that um, that she was speaking on. Mm. Uh, you know, okay, I'll have to go. I'll have to go back and find it where she said, you know, well, we can actually listen to it. We actually can listen to it. That's the the problem. You can say there's an apostrophe in it. 
but you can actually listen to it. But the, the, the problem is here. The biggest problem is here is that now for the next couple of days, you know, I saw Atlas Intel had their final state polls. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the, we're here at Wednesday, right? The only question the media is talking about, she had her unity speech, which was anything but unity. Yeah. Uh, and it com got completely, completely buried by what Biden was doing. It's obvious now. And uh, Scott Jennings asked the question, why is he doing that at this point? It's because he's doing everything to sabotage. He does not want the Democrats to win. He does not want this is Joe Biden. Joe Biden does not want Kamala Harris to win the election. You can't have this many coincidences. Well, that is that where he's come out and actually cut her political throat time and time again in the last month. Well, well, here's the thing. There's a couple of things. If she loses and which means, of course, Trump wins, it destroys his legacy in two major ways. You know, that everything that he has done that she's been a part of, right? If, if you know, the, the whole idea of building his legacy and, and everything else, he can't let that happen, which is why if Trump wins, I believe he's going to come out and say, I could have won. But if she is to win, it also destroys his legacy in that he was a lame candidate. He was a lame nominee. You know, the one thing is, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda. You can say that all day in American politics. Well, I would have won. I would have won. I would have won. If she wins, that's going to be worse than Trump winning for him, for yeah. Biden. It destroys his legacy in a bigger way. That is party law is party one, but he couldn't get it done for his party. That's a bigger hit to his legacy, and he sees that. Here's he the, can't have that. Here's the other cut I wanted to play where CNN is even buying it. Here mm. well, and the White House is trying to say that what President Biden was saying, uh, th they're putting an apostrophe there in supporters, saying it's the singular, I guess referring to the comedian, that supporters comments. I mean, I, it's hard to, to really look at that when you can listen to it for yourself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just. I, you you just you went wow yeah i mean the clinton stuff that he said especially about illegal immigration was just mind-boggling it was like are you paying attention right <laughs> are you guys quiet quitting what's go what's going on but biden this is absolutely calculated by himself his family and his staff they are furious they're furious at the uh, kamala harris campaign and and kamala harris yep and the story that came out this past weekend, the liberal press was reporting that the story that came out is they don't want Biden around anymore. That was it. Right. Right. And he's doing everything. And that's why he's out there. She agreed with me on every because if she doesn't agree with him, then it means his time as president was a failure. Exactly. If if she this is goes back to the day that he walked in to the press room. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe he got wind that she was going to start in interviews, start separating herself from him. And it was going to be in one of those interviews on that weekend. And he couldn't have that and ran down the hall. Hey, she was the inspiration behind these big moves. And then dare her to create a rift to, and come out and say, no, I wasn't. Because that was the day she was supposed to come out. Yes. Later on that day. Right. And talk about where she stands and the differences exactly. between her and, and Biden. And then when yep. it finally came up, she goes, no, 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 there's no differences at all. Not one. And because, it was like, boom. Because he created a no-win situation for her yeah. in that move in the press room. I dare you to go against me. You're going to create a huge rift. And then the media is going to be in a, 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 an even bigger frenzy. If she wins, it destroys his legacy. It destroys it and shows that he was a lame nominee. And he can't have that. That she could win and that he couldn't. And if Trump wins, at least 
he can say, well, I would have won, which he can say until the end of time, and there's no way to prove that. In fact, the numbers showed that he, was, he wasn't going to win, and that was the whole point by his own party. But that doesn't matter to him. He can still say, I won before, I was going to win again, but they pushed me out. If she wins, he's a lame candidate forever, and that's his legacy, and he can't have that. 866 red eye This morning's USDA Farm Report is brought to you by Howe's Products. Tested, trusted, guaranteed since 1920. What has been dryness over much of the continental U.S. since August. Now for the first time in more than two months, we're seeing a substantial dip in the jet stream. Some meaningful storm systems taking a dip into the western United States and then starting to lift out across the nation's midsection. With inclusion of Gulf of Mexico moisture, which USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey says should provide meaningful precipitation in parts of the nation's midsection. You put these two storms together and we're looking at the axis of heaviest rainfall expected from the southern Great Plains, probably central or northern Texas, extending northeastward all the way into the upper Great Lakes region. With widespread two to four inch rainfall totals over the week. And that could certainly lead to significant improvement in the topsoil moisture shortage situation and could lead to much improved conditions for pastures, rangeland, and also newly planted cover crops and winter grains, including winter wheat. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. This report brought to you by Cenex Fuels and Lubes. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Crony and I'm Gary McNamara. Welcome and good morning. Uh, the, the, the biggest problem for what Biden said is think about this uh, in, entire week, uh, the last 10 days or so. Mm. And you had the, the biggest super PAC supporting Kamala Harris that came out and said, stop the fascist and Nazi stuff. It's not working. Yeah, right. It's not working. It's not right. having the results that, that, uh, that you want. And we all know that. Uh, and it's just the fact that they can't win on the issues. They've never been able to win on the issues of where they actually stand with the American people. So you got to throw... Uh, that out. But what Biden has done now is throwing in the garbage. Well, the media, that's all they want to ask any uh, Harris surrogate for the next couple of days. And yeah. you have today, yeah. tomorrow, and Friday. And for all intents and purposes, at that point, it's over. Yep. James Carville said, now, nah, when you look at it, the campaigning really goes on until Friday. Now, I'm sure they'll campaign all the way till Monday, but you've basically destroyed this week. And you have, for example, I'm going to play this as uh, uh, Mayor Adams. Of uh, New York talking about it, saying, mm-hmm. you know, come on, let's let's move on. Right. We're talking about these real problems we're having, and with all that's going on to everyday New Yorkers, we're asking uh, questions that is someone a fascist or is someone a Hitler? That's insulting to me. That is insulting, and I'm not going to engage in that. Everyone needs to turn down the rhetoric, because after election day. We still have to be the United States and not the divided states. And so if people can't understand their real issues facing New Yorkers, and I just find it just humiliating that what every day mom and pops are doing and going through across this country, that here we are having this conversation about this silly item. There you go. Right there. And I think he does represent a significant portion of independents out there that we're looking, okay, who am I going to vote for? What's, what's going to drive me uh, on this? And the fact that it's not working because people worry about their own self-interest. Yep. yep. Where are they hurting? Yep. And, and so to see that from uh, Adams and then, like I said, the, this is the media. They're obsessed with this stuff. The media is obsessed with it. And yep. That's who he's yelling at. Yeah. He's going after yeah. the media. Right. Stop asking these stupid questions. Right. There are important problems out there. Well, they're not going to forget about it, and they're going to hit Biden, too, I believe, on the garbage comments. Right. At, well, Harris on the Biden comments. Mm.
You're listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. Oh, make it stop. <laughs> I'm Gary McNamara. He's Eric Harley. Download our Red Eye Radio app today, and uh, you can listen where and when you choose. That's right, because our show that you're listening to right now becomes a podcast a few minutes after the show is done. I said make it stop because I'm just going through X. I'm telling you, X right now is some of the most entertaining stuff you could possibly find. <laughs> but it was like, I said make it stop, where it was like, look, Hillary and Bill attending Hitler's wedding in 2005. And there's a picture of that. Yeah. I was like, make it stop. Uh, this was really interesting because to set the table yesterday, uh, after the, uh, uh, the, the comedian uh, uh, at the... Trump rally the other day and all the controversy on uh, uh, that. And then uh, (laughs) Biden totally blowing that right out the door with his comments Mm -hmm. that half the country is garbage uh, and saying it as she was giving her unity speech. Just I, I can't I would have never thought things like this would be happening in politics. It's gone beyond what I ever thought. But what you had at the the Trump rally yesterday was the shadow U.S. senator from yeah. Puerto Rico. Just a couple of moments of what she had to say. My name is Zoraida Buxo, and I am the Republican United States shadow senator from a beautiful island where I was born and raised. Indeed, a community very well anchored with steadfast conservative values of family, faith, economic freedom, and deep, deep love of country. Blessed by God, that is home, that is Puerto Rico. So we won't get rattled We won't yield to ignorance, foolishness, or irrational thoughtlessness. We will remain focused on what is really important. We all share a desire for change for the good. The course that our nation has been wrongfully placed by the Biden-Harris administration must be reversed. So there you go. And and she continues. She gave a, uh, quite a long speech, but actually brought Trump up there and said, uh, you know, we need you. And they they uh, they they stood together. So it was a really uh, it was a, a pretty good moment. Uh, I I think uh, the, the one thing that. Uh, this has to be the audio cut of the day. Mm. Yeah. Was when Marco Rubio went up there uh, yesterday uh, in Pennsylvania, in Allentown mm-hmm. and told Trump that. Uh, <laughs> You know what? <laughs> what Biden had said. Yeah, as this is just—it's pure greatness. It's just greatness. Go ahead. All right. Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but I have breaking news for you, Mr. President. You may not have heard this. Just moments ago, Joe Biden stated that our supporters are garbage. <laughs> are garbage. He's talking about the border patrol. He's talking about nurses. He's talking about teachers. He's talking about everyday Americans who love their country and want to dream big again and support you, Mr. President. And I hope their campaign is about to apologize for what Joe Biden just said. We are not garbage. We are patriots who love America. And thank you for running, Mr. President. Wow. That's terrible. That's what it says. That's what it says. So you have, remember Hillary, she said deplorable. And then she said irredeemable, right? But she said deplorable. That didn't work out. Garbage, I think, is worse, right? But he doesn't know. You have to please forgive him. Please forgive him. For he not knoweth what he said. <laughs> Pope D- 
Donald J. Trump the uh, first. And he raised, he raised his hand. He did his. I think he came off as a better preacher. Uh, oh, than, yeah, by far. He's a better preacher than she'll ever be. Than, than Harris did. Yeah. Uh, and just uh, uh, very quickly here, just for the humor side, mm-hmm. I'm not going to play the entire thing, but just a little bit of it here. Uh, yesterday. A publication that we quote here quite often, mm-hmm. the Babylon Bee, yeah. endorsed Kamala Harris. <laughs> <laughs> For those people who don't know, the Babylon Bee is a parody website. That's right. Or they call themselves what quality fake news. Or yeah, right, right. But here's here's Seth Dillon. <laughs> he put out a <laughs> a post on X. Hi, right. I'm Seth Dillon, CEO of the Babylon Bee. While other fake news organizations like the Washington Post and the LA Times refuse to save democracy, we here at the Babylon Bee are proud to do our part. Today, we've decided to officially endorse communist Her- <clears throat> Kamala Harris for president. Why Kamala? Well, we'd be here all day if I listed all the reasons, but I'll name a few. To begin with, she shot straight to the top because of her intellect. Smart lady. She's the first person in history to win a primary without receiving a single vote. That's impressive. That's impressive. She's a person of color. Indian, I think. She's a feminomenon. <laughs> that was the one that got that's one that got to me. He just continues it just continues on with that. Oh man, I'm oh, oh my gosh. What a uh I love it. I absolutely <laughs> I know this era. is. I, I know this is a critically important lesson, but my whole like jaw is hurting from laughing so much tonight. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know uh, it's a critical election. I shouldn't be enjoying it as as much as I am. <laughs> but uh, but I'm I'm telling you, it the most entertaining stuff that you could possibly imagine. But in all seriousness, when you look at the campaign, uh, it. it the the damage, I think it was Chris Saliza who said the damage is not you know repairable. How do you repair what Biden said? Uh, you know, you you look at you look at, for example, uh the media immediately jumped up and said what a comedian said meant this. Now, people like Michael Schellenberger, mm. a Democrat that now has rejected the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. I believe he's a libertarian now. I think he's re- rejected said, look, that wasn't a joke about race. That was a joke about the actual garbage problem that they're having on, on, in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, it's a huge problem that they may not be able to get, you know, rectified for 20 years. They were having problems before the, hur- you know, a couple of hurricanes hit in the last couple of years, but their garbage problem is unbelievably bad. And he goes, that's what he was talking about. But whether he was or not, the fact is what they're trying to say is if a comedian said it, yeah, you know, at a Trump rally, then Trump endorses it. That right. was the entire point. Well, that just completely, they can't come back out. I mean, Mark Cuban can't come out tomorrow and say, look, uh, Biden isn't Harris. Biden isn't running Harris's. It doesn't matter what he has to say. Right. No, she's part of his administration, and he's her boss, and she has said she agrees, uh, you know, with everything that he did. Yeah. And right. so uh, and and so you re- you can't walk back from this. And the fact is, they don't want to deal with it. They came up with that stupid excuse about an apostrophe. Well, it wasn't supporters. It was supporters, but an apostrophe in there. And then an apostrophe in the middle there in the transcript. Uh, in, 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 in the, can you imagine someone sitting there as they're trying to figure out, how the hell do we get out of this one? Well, look, he didn't say supporter apostrophe S. Right. Uh, or he didn't say, you know, he didn't say just supporters with an S at the end without an apostrophe, mm-hmm. so we can put one in and say that the apostrophe meant that to the point where CNN, I'm sure, went, stop it! Yeah. Yeah. Even on CNN, they go, come on, that's not believable. We heard, uh, you know, we heard what he said. But the problem is the campaign's just about over. Yep. And there's no more time. And this goes all the way. They're not going to answer the question. They're going to sit there and continue with the apostrophe which the public isn't going to buy. The media is not going to buy that, which means the questions come up to every one of their surrogates. And that's a problem because they won't answer it, which takes you what? All the way through Friday. Yeah. 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 And, and that's the problem that they and, have. And there's, there's the big, there's the big problem. 
There's just, there's, there's no time. It's over. I've been saying for a while, I don't believe there are any true undecided voters out there. But by now, there aren't. You've made up your mind. It's whether or not you'd actually do the deed. Actually, whether you're going to vote or not is what you're undecided about. And if you're in that boat, then you're likely a would-be Kamala supporter or Democrat supporter. You're not a Trump supporter because Trump supporters are foaming at the mouth to get out in early voting, and we've seen the results. So there's really, you know, there's nothing nothing that can be done. The band is playing. Uh, women and children are getting on life rafts. And we'll see who wins, but it's all over. It's You've already hit the iceberg. There's no way to turn around your campaign. If if all of this gets to a win, somebody's going to have to explain a lot to me. Well, the uh, final electoral map based on Atlas Intel polls, which was the most accurate, they were the most accurate pollster in the 2020 election. Mm. Trump wins electoral votes 296 to 242. Mm. Is what they have. Okay. So, 296? 296 to mm. 242. Okay. Mm. Is what they have. Right. And they give North Carolina to uh, Harris. Okay. She was up by 0.1. So that's, you know, as we know, the margin of error, that's inside the margin of error. Mm. And Rasmussen came out today and said, uh, well, overnight, and said, our poll shows a huge, because they've pulled, they've pulled, apparently, the Harris campaign, they've pulled the, uh, uh, the, um, uh, money out of North Carolina and moved it to Virginia. And they're, everybody's right. asking the question, why? Right. And Rasmussen or Mark Mitchell came out and said, I'll tell you why our poll coming out today. He's got a big lead in North Carolina. So, right. right. You know, that you could look at as almost the minimum of 296. And I don't know if, I don't know if Trafalgar did that or somebody else analyzed it and said, well, if their polling is exactly correct, that's what you get. Well, the no toss up state map at, RCP right now has Trump Vance at 297, but it takes Michigan away from Trump in that, uh, but gives Wisconsin to him and gives North Carolina to him. And so it puts him at 297. If, if again, the states where he's leading right now, he were to win, and that, that's, that's a huge if based on all of the variables, if you're looking at polls, again, the no toss up states map, right now has Trump Vance at 297. Okay. But that means he doesn't win Michigan, but he does win North Carolina, and he wins Wisconsin. He wins Pennsylvania, Ohio. He wins Arizona and Nevada. He wins, wow, a huge chunk of the states. I mean, 297. Uh, if you throw in Michigan there, then he gets to... 312, again, assuming he also wins North Carolina. And that 312 number has been thrown out a lot. You've yeah. hit the 312 number a lot. Uh, three, I, you know, I said a three, 306 or 312, and, and that was based on what was going on in North Carolina and also what we're watching it with with uh, Michigan and Wisconsin. Um, If he gets North Carolina and Michigan based on and everything else that he's he's got here, in in um, this no toss up states map, then yeah, he gets to three twelve, and Atlas Intel has him winning Michigan. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah so. so it's quite possible he he does. We'll see. Eight six six ninety red eye. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. You know what I'm thinking for lunch today, Eric? What's that? Let's head to Rochester, New York, to Nick's and get a garbage plate. Garbage plate. Let's about, go. We all head. We all head to get a garbage plate. Yeah, I'm. All I'm you, all for that. All you pieces of garbage. Let's head to Nick's. 
what is it? Is it Nick Tahoe's Hots? I think it is. Yeah, yeah. In Rochester, in that Rochester, has, that the has. The, I, I know the other restaurants also because it's become so popular. Right. Let's go get a garbage plate in Rochester. Right. I'm, I'm in. You know. I'm in. That'd be great. I'm. Oh yeah. In fact, mm. Pavlov's dogs hit. Yeah. I said garbage plate, and I think I heard a little gurgling down there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Th- hopefully that was hunger, but that's. <laughs> It's none of my business. It, it, it's it's on the menu though. Let's it's on the menu. I'll, I'll take one, please. Okay. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.